Chapter 4 Umul Oasis Finding something that most people don't even believe exists, there are few things greater than the feeling and sensations that accompany such a find. Soshu, a Paltian scientist, before the fall of the Paltian Empire. Aspel, Second Galaxy. It was starting to get dark when they walked up onto a rise and stared down into a surprising valley. Parker couldn't believe it. He really, really couldn't believe it. He had hoped, yes. Of course he had. He'd hoped they might make the find of the century, but... Here it was. Suddenly. Just there. What the... He heard Gaz say behind him. Wait, what? Breen said, and he stepped up beside his father who was staring down into the green valley at all the trees and on toward a great pool of clear water in the middle. The elder Florian man was holding his map limply in one hand, and he seemed to be trembling. How did no one ever find these before? Uala asked in dismay, and she looked behind her, across the orange desert and brush and cacti they'd meandered through to get here. Sure, you couldn't see Wacht anymore, but they weren't that far off the beaten path, were they? Did we really just find this place? Reen asked pulling the map from his father's hand and studying it. I, I think we did, Mr. Callie whispered, bringing a trembling hand to his mouth. Okay, I'm confused, Gaz said, looking around. This doesn't seem that hidden. This is a trick. What, you think someone just painted an oasis in the middle of the desert? Parker chuckled. Mr. Callie looked into the reddening sky and Parker followed his gaze. The sun was sinking behind the horizon now. The moon was up, full and bright. I wonder if we should head back for the night, Uala said, drawing everyone's attention. No! Mr. Callie snapped, making Uala jump in surprise. No! The man said again, a little more calmly. I mean, we came here to find this place. We should at least take a look, shouldn't we? Parker and his friends looked at each other. There were smiles all around. Yeah, Parker agreed and looked down into the valley. Let's go check it out. He led the way down the slope toward the trees. They were just about to start into the woods when Uala pointed, spotting something nearby. She hurried over and Parker followed with the others. In moments, they were standing around an old land skimmer. The car was crashed into the trees, its nose crumpled. The once red paint of the vehicle was rusted and flaking. The windows were coated in dust, at least the windows that were still outside the woods. The windows on the car that were in the forest had moss growing on them. This is so weird, Uella said. With one of his paper white hands, Parker grabbed the driver's side door and pulled it open. The inside of the car looked surprisingly clean. There was a pulsar gun on the seat and some papers. Parker reached for one of the pages and looked at it. There was gibberish all over the paper. What is it? Gaz asked. Parker shook his head. I don't know, he replied. Reen ducked into the car and pulled out the pulsar gun. He checked it. It still had a charge. This is really weird, Reen grumbled. Maybe you should hang on to that thing, yeah? Parker said to Reen. The man nodded. They broke out their flashlights and left the car behind, heading into the woods. The temperature was cooler in the trees, and where the desert had been almost unbearably dry, there was dampness in the trees, and it smelled like it had just rained. This just keeps getting weirder and weirder, Gaz said. I've, I've read about this, his father gasped. It's almost like the oasis has its own ecosystem. Well, we can confirm that, Parker said. They continued into the forest and the ground sloped down and down. The sun had sunk fully behind the horizon and the moon was shining brightly in the starry heavens when Parker and his companions stopped on a rise, looking down at something strange below them. What is that? Reen asked and his friends shone their flashlights down at it. It looked like a giant white basalt lotus flower. Its great stone petals pointed toward the starry sky. What do those stories say about the guys who found this place before? Gaz asked, his voice a little haunted, but didn't look at Parker. There was a giant lotus temple, Parker whispered. It felt like his heart was trying to push its way out of his chest. It sort of looks like a lotus flower, Reen said, his voice quivering. Parker and his friends all gazed down at the thing for a long moment. Then, with a surge of adrenaline and unbound excitement, they bolted down the slope toward it. Parker was the first to reach it, 
and he stared up at it, his green eyes wide, his heart hammered relentlessly in his chest. The thing soared above him, and though it was supposed to be ancient, the white surface of the temple gleamed as if it had been polished. The craftsmanship was impeccable, almost impossibly so. Parker had seen few perfect things in his life. This was one of them. Gaz skidded to a stop beside Parker and exclaimed, By the stars! What is it? Luala asked, no one in particular. I mean, it's the Lotus Temple, but what is it? It doesn't look like age has even touched it, Mr. Callie whispered in his shaky voice. I don't know for sure what it is, or what's in it, Parker said, his ears twitching with excitement. But I'm going to find out. He started forward, but Gazanreen's dad caught him by the arm, stopping him in his tracks. What? Parker asked, turning to look at the Florian man. There was a worried look in his brown face and his dark eyes were glistening. We must be cautious, Mr. Kelly whispered. We should call some authorities. We should... No way, Parker declared. We call someone in and tell them we've found the mythical Lotus Temple. We'll never get a look inside. They'll close this whole area off. I came here to check this place out, not to hand it over to someone else. Come on, Parker urged. We have to take a look, Mr. Kelly. Just look at this thing. I... I don't know, the elder Florian said in a shaky voice. It was almost like he was having a sense of things. Maybe if he'd been a little wiser, Parker might have heeded the man's concern. As it was, he just wanted to find out exactly what it was they'd found. Could the stories of a passageway be true? Mr. Kelly let out a little breath. Uh, okay, he finally relented. We'll, we'll go check it out. But we'll be careful. Deal, Parker said, and he turned, leading the way toward the massive white stone structure. Thank you for listening. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share with your friends, and there are more episodes on the way.